So obviously lower back pain is a major problem. You know, statistics show that 85% of us will have lower back pain at some point in time. I always joke around the other 15% are lying. <laughs> so I think, you know, lower back pain is a, is a problem that we all need to address. And one of the best ways of addressing those problems is again, becoming more familiar with the facts and educating ourselves. So when someone presents with lower back pain, for example, and we'll use lower back pain as just an example, uh, we need to be able to differentiate all the different etiologies of lower back pain. And there's, there, there are many, there are many. I mean, enough to, to, again, fill up a whole lecture. Specifically in terms of epidural steroid injections, what the, one of the problems that we've had is we've had this problem of increased utilization of epidural steroid injections, but at the same time, we've had a problem where physicians are not able to administer epidural steroid injections to their patients because of denials from insurance companies or myths as to what they are, or how they work, or, or how useful they can be. So we have a, a, a duality uh, issue right now where we have a lack of real good knowledge of when epidural steroid injection should be used, and we have the lack of being able to administer proper treatments to patients because of some of the myths that are out there. One of the reasons the myths, that, uh, the myths exist and the bad information exists is we've had an increase in utilization by all specialties. So people who have been trained in proper pain management and proper interventional pain management and people who have no training or people who are not doing it appropriately. And that bad data, a lot of that bad data comes from people who are not doing it appropriately or don't know when to administer an epidural steroid injection. You know, there's a, sort of a saying out there, garbage in, garbage out. If, you have, uh, if you're doing something that's not indicated or appropriate, or you're not doing it correctly, you're not going to get good data. And that's where a lot of insurance companies have looked at some of this data, and they've said, hey, you know, we, we're not sure if epidural steroid injections help. Well, if you talk to the thousands of patients that I've taken care of, or the millions of patients who have had epidural steroid injections done correctly, they'll say they're godsends. They helped them function. They helped them, you know, continue working. They helped them stay off medications. They helped them from being disabled. So when done correctly, they help. When not done correctly, or if the wrong procedure is done for the wrong indication, they don't help. So we need to make sure we differentiate that, and one of the best ways to differentiate that is getting a good, solid education of when they should be done, when they shouldn't be done, and really getting good, solid education and training for, for how to do them, and, and, and making sure that patients see physicians who have been trained properly in how to administer uh, those injections. We have two types of perceptions out there for what epidural steroid injections are. There's one perception out there that uh, says that uh, everyone with back pain or everyone with you know, sciatic pain or everyone with you know, pain that is chronic or whatnot needs an epidural steroid injection. And then we have the other side that says they're complete baloney and they shouldn't be offered, they're not necessary. You know, just in, in my practice, just uh, recently we have a patient who we've been trying to get a epidural steroid injection approved for two years now and we're not able to get it approved because we are getting responses from the insurance company from non-pain physicians saying that they don't work. So we have a big disconnect in terms of education, big disconnect in terms of data. Um, the reality is, is that um, they do work in correct patients, but not all the time. Because again, they should be used in that uh, uh, ladder that we typically use when we are taking care of patients. So we start with conservative options, simple options, then we go to the next step and the next step. So when we get to that step of interventional pain management, when we get to that step of epidural steroid injections, um, we need to make sure that those are done properly and appropriately. And if they're done properly and then done appropriately and they don't work, they can be very useful in terms of telling us from a diagnostic standpoint how severe that patient's problem is. And then they can be very useful from our standpoint to know when someone needs surgery. When they're not done correctly, we lose all of the diagnostic benefits from those injections. So when they're not done correctly, all of a sudden, now we have patients who are on medications they don't need to be on, or we have patients who are having surgeries that they don't need, which then results in even more disability. So what, what needs to be understood is that patients who have nerve root compression 
and pain as a result of that are candidates for epidural steroid injection. Now, what also needs to be understood is that there's no such thing as just epidural steroid injection. There are multiple ways to perform it, multiple different approaches, multiple different levels. Just in the lumbar spine, just in the lumbar spine, there are over 20 different ways of doing an epidural steroid injection. Most people don't know that. And if you don't know all those different ways, you might be performing the wrong injection or you might be ordering the wrong injection for a physician to perform. Because of some physicians who have overutilized epidural steroid injections or really interventional pain management in general, and because of some pharmacies producing counterfeit medications, what we have is we have results that are less than favorable. So we have patients who have gotten sick, meningitis, patients who have died from epidural steroid injections. And it's not necessarily because the epidural steroid injection as a term or as a modality is bad. It's because of the people who were part of that process may have been bad. Either the injection wasn't done correctly, uh, it was maybe done by people who shouldn't have been doing it, or in fact, the medications that were being administered, the steroid medication that was being administered, was counterfeit, and it was flawed, and it was dangerous, and it wasn't sterile, and it was infective. So that's where we've seen a lot of the problems. If you sort of break down the data in terms of side effects, adverse events, and morbidity and mortality with epidural steroid injections, you will find that within each one of those, there was some type of deviation from the standard of care. Now, occasionally things happen, even when you do everything correctly. And if you look at that data of when bad things happened, even though everything was done correctly, the rates are incredibly low. The rates of adverse events are incredibly low. And that needs to be understood. Problem is, most people don't understand the fundamentals behind interventional pain management or epidural steroid injections, so they don't know how to dissect that data. Once you dissect that data, you'll find that from an adverse event standpoint, um, it's much lower than someone having surgery, and that's for sure.